As the deadline for achieving Millennial Development Goals approaches, the United Nations and state parties to the Millennial Declaration are putting various processes in place to evolve a successor framework which will reflect the views of people across divides and profile solutions to current and emerging development challenges. At global level, the United Nations Secretary General established a post-2015 UN talks team, co-chaired by the UN Department of Economic and Social Affairs and the UN Development Program, including a high-level panel eminent persons, to advise the UN in this process. On the 18th of August 2014, Nigeria government, through Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Millennium Development Girls, in partnership with the United Nations System in Nigeria and the Center for Law and Social Economic Development, hosted a presidential summit on the Millennium Development Girls and the post 2015 development agenda. I want to offer my warm and sincere welcome to all of you, Excellencies for making it possible and bringing yourself to this presidential summit on the NDGs and post-2015 development agenda that is actually aimed at accelerating our progress against the NDGs in the little time we have left. While we are setting the stage for an inclusive post-2015 development agenda. Poverty eradication, access to sustainability, and sustainable energy, infrastructural development, population demographics and governance, which are fundamental issues facing least developed societies, must be at the heart of the new agenda. Ladies and gentlemen, if the current framework is the floor for setting more ambitious and contextuous appropriate policy aims, then the new framework must be the tool to complete the structure. Indeed, it must finish the current business of the MDGs. I assure you of government's commitment to consider the outcomes of this summit, and I wish you productive deliberations. It is in this spirit that I heartily declare the presidential summit of the MDGs and the post-2015 development agenda open. As part of the negotiating processes, a parallel session co-hosted by the Nigerian North Central State critically discussed the achievements and challenges of the role of the MDGs in providing access to free and quality basic education at state levels. The state's under review includes Kogi, Nanja, Nasarawa, Plateau, FCT, Kwara, and Benue. Each state Represented by one speaker on panel of discussant, personalities in attendance include the Executive Governor of Kogi State, Captain Idris Wada, Secretary to the Government of Kogi State, Commissioners, State Special Assistant on MDGs, State MDGs Focal Persons, Executive Secretary of UBEG, MDGs Project Coordinators, and Civil Society Organizations. The parallel session was held at the Play 2 Meeting Hall, Transco Hilton Hotel, Abuja. So through the MDG programs, we have been able to expand access to clean drinking water for the poor through provision of motorized boreholes and hand pump boreholes as necessary. Through MDG, we are able to get FTS programs, we are able to get training of our teachers so that they can be up to date in their knowledge. MDG has killed in and is developing our schools. One of the best practices that we are trying to do in Quara is building rural houses for the rural teachers. And then, of course, we make sure that the entire school environment were made very, very attractive, that children will want to go to school. Now, the acceleration efforts of the MDGs and the process for a successor framework has taken the center stage. President Golakabele Jonathan's administration have seen the need to evaluate the achievements, challenges, and lessons learned in the implementation of the MDG with a view to preparing itself for the next development agenda. There's still a problem of um, uh, dropouts and, and uh, children that are unable you know, to finish 
uh, their primary school education. The method of accessing funds and implementation are very cumbersome. If we can form mother's association of children in schools, it will be better for us so that we sensitize ourselves on the need for these children to go to school. And I ask her, after the students must have graduated from this emerging school, because the essence of establishing these schools is because of the peculiarities of these ambassadors. Are we looking at a situation where tomorrow they will begin to think of Almajiri universities? A key representation on the topic, the role of the MDGs in providing access to free and quality basic education at state level, achievements and challenges, was done by Dr. Jacobo Gambo, Deputy Executive Secretary, on behalf of Executive Secretary of UBEG. I want to say here that the office of the senior special assistant to Mr. President of F on, on MDGs have been partnering with UBEG to implement the goal two of the MDGs, which is focused on basic education, especially in the areas of teachers' professional development. So not only that, the funding of the Almighty schools that we see all over the states in the nation are part funded by the Office of the Zero Special Assistant, Mr. President of or MDGs. Discussion by the panelists commenced with a remark by the chairman of the parallel session, Professor Olugbemiro Jegede, secretary to the Kogi State Government. This will lead us to the goals of the 21st century. We must have a sustainable development, highly educated, mobile and adaptable force, multi-skilled and multi-tasked people, a knowledge and a learning society, a use of ecological and geographical conditions for a nation. This is how Nigeria leads the way in improving leadership for the rest of the continent of Africa in terms of forward-looking strategies that can build on the gains of the MDGs, addressing new and emerging development challenges, as well as stepping up political commitment in terms of financing and institutional frameworks towards implementing the post-2015 development agenda. The North Central panelist includes Alhaji Adamu Jatau Noma, representing FCT, Honorable Anom Iho, Benue State, Professor Dangpam, Plato State, Mrs. Catherine Adeyemi, Kwara State, Dr. Salisu M. Ara, Nasrawa State, Alhaji Hassan Uba, Niger State. Each member of the panel of this discussant contributed on the topic as it relates to the situation in the state he or she represented. Best practices identified in the course of discussion include constitutional school-based management committees comprising parents and the school management for enhancing the quality of teacher-people relationship. It is expected that the impact of the identified best practices like school-based management committees will enhance quality of the school environment, enhance the quality of the teaching staff, and attract increased enrollment and reduction in out of school. The MDG has been doing well. We are filling MDG to the news and cranny of this local government. They give us water to drink, regardless of the settlements. All our schools benefited. They gave each school and pump bowl. They did some renovation in some schools classroom renovations. They constructed new classrooms for some schools in local, local government here and other local government that are under MDG. Go to our market. They gave us boreholes there, our hospitals. We are enjoying MDG and we are filling the part of the federal government in partnership with the with Kwara state government and local government together. We are bringing out something useful, and our people are replacing MDG. With the help of the MDGs, we have this present structure. And this 
present secretary has already left the schools. You can see that we have a lot of copious learners are dropping in because of the structures, the building itself, the painting that is very attractive. It attracted the community and the learning enhances here too. So we are happy by seeing that you are well done. Quite apart from that, with the structure is not only made structurally, it was supplied with this with the desk for the learners to sit in. And it is a electrified structure too, which is even made one day if the school develops, it can be used for ICT classes too. State strategic education development plans will enhance ownership and sustainability of a program. Quality and access policy will promote provision of quality infrastructure, capacity building of teachers, rural housing schemes for rural teachers. Teachers' needs assessment will help identify the gaps in number and quality of teachers, thereby achieving the required teacher-people ratio. Teacher needs assessment. And an exam was given to our teachers. Primary school teachers could not answer correctly the questions for primary four pupils. So that brought about the need for retraining pattern. And this was done. Homegrown school feeding and health programs will enhance enrollment and generate employment. We introduced homegrown school feeding and health program in some of our schools, and that was very, 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 very important. In fact, let me tell you, when we introduced the homegrown school uh, feeding and health program in some of our primary schools, do you know that even children that their parents never wanted them to go to school, the children on their own were sneaking to go to school. Commitment was strengthened in form of roles which reminds the states to ensure that unaccessed intervention funds are accessed and channeled to basic education delivery. We have money and the votes there. Please bring this money up to us. Give us this money, they monitor us whether we will do it or not. Advocacy and sensitization activities are intensified at local levels. Continuous teachers' professional development is institutionalized. Teachers and education managers are adequately motivated. Education managers' capacity is regularly enhanced. Schools in rural location receive adequate attention in terms of teacher recruitment and development of infrastructure. Well, this place is two classroom building before, but some parts have collapsed, and people, nobody can stay. Uh, around this area before. So we need to park our peoples from the classroom to library and computer. It was after the construction of this classroom that we moved the peoples from the computer room and library room to the new building. Since we have been given this class, the peoples are able to sit comfortably and they are able to write and do the learning comfortably without any problem. And the work of the teachers too were even more effective than before. These best practices will serve as a working document which will guide Nigeria's negotiations and participation in the final global processes for the post-2015 development agenda and will be presented to the President and the Federal Executive Council as well as the state governments to inform policy planning and institutional forecasting towards Nigeria's implementation of post-2015 agenda. This same working document will be made available to development partners and diplomatic missions as Nigeria's forward-looking strategy for the post-2015 agenda. This is another success story of Goodluck Jonathan's administration. The story of government's commitment in ensuring a brighter future for everyone in Nigeria. The 
Enough Central Parallel Sessions.